Shut up and sit down. For a little light workout outside. You no know, way to get work done at home. Have a good one. What's up guys and girls, Dave Goyce aka Comerica Muscle and I'm here with Chris the Goon Griffin. So this is my return video back to Muscle Squad Magazine and I figured it would be great because I'm here in Boston. If you guys watched my last interview with Joe Piatro, Piatro, I'll never say his name right dude. How do you say it? Piatro. Okay, see, I say Piatro. I fuck it up. Because you're Portuguese. But see, it's always something. But Chris worked with me in Iron Mag Labs with uh, Christian Duque. So, what do you want to talk about? Well, let's just go right from here. How'd you meet Christian? Okay, this is interesting. Christian came on the MD boards. Like, I've been, you know, posting on the MD boards for a long time. Um, he came up when they put Greg on the MD boards again. And Christian got a show. This, I don't know what the hell you want to call it. His muscle nose, whatever he, yeah. he was calling, and he was catching a lot of flack. And he posted a video now. Everybody, this isn't insulting the misfits. I just don't follow them. You know, I, I, I don't either. Yeah, you know, I nothing know. against them. Yeah. I just don't watch them. It was one of the guys from the misfits. The guy won the whatever they call that show down there. The you know the misfits do a little small show in Florida. Yeah. And he posted him up and was like, this guy's going to come up and win the Team U, or the, team, uh, the, the NPC Universe. I still call it the Team U because I'm older. And at first I was like, and these audiences very heavily Northeast. And like, the Universe is kind of like our show, like our national. Yeah. So when you pull this hillbilly guy who was in a class of three in a miniature show in Florida saying he's going to come up here and sweep and win the Universe, I was like, dude, you're so freaking wrong. And I was like, other than Southern Muscle, people win those shows on there couldn't even place in a big Northeast region. Yeah. You know, and then he was just arrogantly going back and forth and we got to the point where like, it was like, shut the hell up. And the guy who was my co-host, Mike Cox, started like slamming him too. Like we were both slamming him. Christian? Yeah. 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 That's Christian. You guys know Christian uh, Duque. You've seen plenty of stuff. I'm sure Joe's bashed Christian. You've seen my interview. Uh, that actually got me working back here. And then Christian fucked me over and played all that political shit and he did the same thing to you. So what happened with you? Like, why aren't you with Iron Man Labs now? Like, what happened there? Well, all I know is right before the last two weeks got a little bit weird. And he was going to get rid of Valentino one way or the other. Okay, I'm going to get back to that. Greg was on the show. And he called me up one night and he's like, let me put you on a phone call. Just sit there and listen. And he calls Greg up and kind of like says you're doing some shit wrong. And he's like, by the way, Greg, Chris is on this call. And I'm not saying anything. I'm not adding anything. I'm just like, yep, I'm here. You know, it was just a weird fucking place to be. You know, like, why am I in this phone call? And then like the next day, he posts, you know, like to a lot of little group that I'm his go-to guy now. Yeah, that's what I seen. And, you know, and while he's shitting on Greg and pulled that one, you know, it kind of got a little weird between me and Greg for a while until we actually had a talk, you know? It was very like putting 
Greg and I are in a position to be like at each other's throats. This is the way I think, because on my interview I did with Joe, I mentioned that, because I've said, you guys know Greg Valentino is my boy, when my wife's right there, but how many times would Greg call and we'd be on the phone for four hours? Yeah, at least two to three times a week. Easily I would talk to Greg for hours and hours and hours, and then all of a sudden, like, when I quit Iron Mag Labs, I didn't hear nothing from Greg, so to this, actually to this day, like, we'd be like, hey Dave, what's up, how's my boy doing, but I haven't talked to him. So I kind of think, actually, I'm pretty certain that douchebag, you know, Christian said something to him. He, yeah, it's because worth. he he played, he played sides. You dealt with that. Yeah, yeah. Christian was very like, you know, one person against another. And what happened was off of Iron Man, one of my videos got completely deleted. That was like my first breakthrough, like over a thousand view, like in a night video, and it got deleted. And he was trying to blame Greg. Like Greg did it? Yeah, like Greg did it because he was jealous. Or Greg's uh, girlfriend, I can't remember her name right now. Uh, Lucia. Yeah, Lucia. And I'm like, there's no way. You know, you, you have to be in a, first I didn't, would never think Greg would do that. You, yeah, have, to yeah. be in a, you have to be an admin of the site to do that. Yeah. And then he claimed Big Frank was secretly an admin and no one could find them. Yeah. How are you secretly an admin? You're not. That no one can see. Yeah, you're not. You just, well, you can be an admin Nobody knows about it. That right. would be secret, but there's no such thing as a secret admin that nobody knows. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you went to the admin page, you would see who's the administrator. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I know he had a, a big, giant... I don't want this... To, well, if this is a Bash Christian video, whatever, fucking fuck him. That I really have that much bad negative energy about somebody, and I don't ever do that. That's horrible. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is. It's a but bad. you know what it is? It's like, I know he did it to you. He did it to Frank. He did it to Greg. Now, maybe you know, because I, like I said, I haven't talked to Greg, but why didn't Christian want Greg out so bad? Greg was the guy. Greg was the one making the video. I have no idea why he wanted Greg out. That's the thing I can't figure out. I don't know if like Christian was already given this two-week notice already. Because two weeks after this happened, he called me up on a Monday, because that's when my show was, you know, because I moved to Mondays because of Greg. It had been Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. And I had Shanique Grant on. Awesome, right? I'm having, you know, the future Miss Olympia going to be on my show. Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, it's 7 o'clock, and at 5 o'clock, he tells me, I mag, let us all go. There's no more media. Let you all go. Let us all go on a Monday, two hours before showtime. So what did you end up doing? Fuck it, I threw the show on. Yeah, good. You know, I mean, I got that show up. There was no way I was going to tell Miss Olympia, no. Yeah. You know, yeah, I look like a complete monkey. Yeah. Plus, I mean, she's a great guest, but people wanted to see it, you know? I just went on and plugged away with it. So, wh what have you been doing since then? Like, what what's on your plate? Um, right now, Mike and I have gone independent. We're just producing Beast Coast Live on our own. And that's on pl Plug It? Oh, uh, plug it. Beast Coast Live. It's on Beast Coast Live Facebook. We do a weekly live show every Monday night at 7. Okay, 7 Eastern time. 7 Eastern time. So, if you're living Cali like I do, even though I'm from here, it's 4 o'clock my time. And... Once it's off, it takes like 20 minutes and you can watch the replays right on the site. Yeah, that's what we were doing. Now, do you still talk to Greg and Frank? I still talk to Frank occasionally. I, I mean, Greg occasionally, like a couple times. I talked to him last week. Yeah, see, like if anybody I message, it would be uh, Lucinda, because like, we'll go back and forth. Lucia, Lucinda. I got somebody else in my head. But um, we'll talk. But actually, it was actually, it's funny because all that bad comment that Christian did to all of us, a lot of us are back at Muscle Sport Magazine. So I don't know what's going to happen with you and Star, but eventually I'd like to see you here at Muscle Sport Magazine or something along yeah. that line. I, I can't rule that out at this moment in time. Exactly. So, Joe, if you're listening, get, get the goon. Get the goon. Uh, he's very, very knowledgeable with bodybuilding, physique. Tell, tell him what your background is. For the people that don't know you, tell them what your history is. Um, I've been training forever since I've been 13 years old. I'm 43 now. I actually just turned 44. Make myself a little bit younger. Um, <clears throat> didn't start competing until I was like older, older. I trained for football. And then when I got done with football, I was like, oh, I'm too tall. There's no way Six, I'm gonna five. Be, There's no way I'm gonna have it, you know, but I kept training like a bodybuilder. Um, my training partner, Ron Harris, you know, with MD, MD, he kind of like said, hey, you know, give a show a go. Seven years ago, 
and I jumped into a show, did it, and just got hooked in the competing aspect. But I was already living the lifestyle. So you never compete till you were 37? Yeah. Okay, which is good news for me, because I'm going to do my first show, I'll probably be about 43, because I'm 42 now. Yeah, so... It's looking. That's good. Guys, if you don't know, he, he's six foot five. And what, what were you saying when you were on off season? Over 300, right? A couple of years ago, yeah, I got up to 320. The dude's a fucking monster. I, I got a workout video. I don't know if I'm going to impose the B-roll over this as we're talking so they can see you and me and Andrea lifting. And Andrea, she goes hard. She, she was no joke. Oh, she's no joke. She's a bearded lady, man. Now, you're... <laughs> That's good, but she's she is very fucking determined. She's like a pit bull. Oh yeah, she's got a great spirit. She's gonna do well with WPD. Now, how long have you been coaching her? Uh, about a year and a half. You have a lot of people you coach. Yeah, I, I do a prep business. It's actually I've got the show Beast Coast for my Beast Coast Fitness. Okay. I, I do training, specific sport training. You know, more for bodybuilding, and I do contest preparations. All right, so what I'm going to end up doing is this video is going to end up going on Muscle Sport TV because you guys always see Superhero Strong episodes first on Muscle Sport TV. I let that sit there for like a week, week and a half, and then I take the video down and I put it on mine. So when it goes on my Comerica Muscle from my subscribers on my channel, on below, I'll have everything. So any information, any links you want to give, um, your Facebook so people can see you, okay, your cool. coaching thing, anything you want to give me, give me, and then I'll do all the hard work and let them contact you just by hitting the link. Excellent, thank okay. you. Um, he's a Patriot fan. I'm a Patriots fan, what can I say? Yeah, this is my second time I've been back here, so right now we're, where, where are we, tell them what? We're at Bayshore Athletic Club, Brantree Mass, just a little bit south of the city of Boston. Great gym, Tim and Andre set Dude. us up with this room for an interview. Tim and Andre Darling, best ownership going. And I know I keep throwing up, but this is easily one of the top gyms in the country. If not, I mean, it's definitely the best gym in the Boston area. I'm it's definitely going to go. I know that for a fact. Because you guys see me plug the official powerhouse gym, and we cater to power lifters and bodybuilders and actors and musicians. But as soon as I came in here, this was a hardcore vibe. Yeah. Which I like that. I told you, this is like three times the size of my gym. And you can tell the owner cares about it. So we've been shooting a lot of ideas because I'm the manager at Dave. So he helped me a lot. So if you guys come anywhere over here in Braintree, right? Yeah, anywhere south of Boston, just hit this place up, Bayshore Athletics. Bayshore Athletics. And that is another link that's going to definitely be on the bottom. So I want you guys to hit this because it's a good gym. It's not a crunch. You have crunches here? Uh, we have one or two, but they call it lifetime here. It's the same kind it's of thing as crunch. What, what do Big we have top here? dollars. What's the shitty gyms? you got a lot of Planet Fitness. Wow, here. Planet Fitness, Workout World. Just I, I just know gym. when I came in here, this reminded me of um, a bigger world's gym. I used to go to the world's gym on Branch Ave in Providence. Okay, yeah. And um, this is what this kind of reminded me of. It was like people were here to lift. You can sweat. The AC's on, but you, you don't even know it, man. You, you're working out. We worked out hard today. It was a good workout. It was my last workout for a week, so I'm enjoying this. Yeah, congratulations yes. with the wedding. Thank you. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm happy. She's, she's, my daughter's a happy girl, so she's getting married on Saturday. I don't know when I'm going to post this because, again, I'm on vacation and I'm just enjoying wife time. I'm going to eat like a fat ass. Um, my wife hates when I say that, but it's true. Who's going to eat like a fat ass? No, why not? I want to be normal, dude. You know, how often do you, do you get to eat regular food, as in fat ass food? Once a week. Oh, I, have, uh, I have a meal once a week. And you're that thin? Like this lean? Yeah. Uh, I'm jealous. I can't do that. I gain five pounds. Yeah, and I tear it up to a like when I get a meal. Fast metabolism. Yeah, I'm an ecto. That's the thing. It's it's so tough for me to put on size that I actually need like a bunch of junk calories. That's how I was when I was younger. Now now I think of a carb and I can be over 200 pounds like this. Oh yeah, like I'll like well, last time I dropped a couple five guys triples and some hamburgers. I mean some fries, big bag of fries. <laughs> you know, but how many people do you coach? Um, I have a good number monthly. Some people all all year long. Uh, over 20 right now. That's really good. You guys, you'll be seeing a lot of video with Andrea. If I don't use that video footage as B-roll with this, you, I'll just do a separate video and do, throw over music so it'll be like a workout video. With oh, sweet. I, mean, I might just do both. I don't know. We'll see. Whatever my creative mind goes. But I wanted to introduce you to Chris because he, he he's the same background for me. He's from here, from Boston. Um, I have a lot more opportunities being in California 
than I would have if I stayed living here. That's why I told you earlier, I'm proud of you, because you've come a long way for being Boston, and the niche of bodybuilding isn't as strong as it is in California. Oh, it definitely isn't. But Boston's always been one of the pockets of bodybuilding. Yes, absolutely. I mean, like he had Kala. Before that, he had Matarazzo, DeMeo. Yep, Jay Kala. Yeah. You know, there's all, like, you know, right now, there's a decent number of pros in there. Like, I mean, you know, we got Jose Raymond, Derek Upshaw, uh, Craig Licker, you know, like, mm -hmm. just in the city, and then numerous, like, MPD guys like Derek Straff and, you know, a bunch of guys I'm actually forgotten, and a whole bunch of girls, ladies. There's a yeah. bunch of figure. Yeah, there was a WPD man. girl, you know, like, um, Jody Lyons, WPD pro, and yeah. a lot of national level people all around. And here's a big difference, too, between the fitness worlds on the West Coast and the East Coast. The West Coast, almost everybody stays in shape because it's like summer all year round. It's dry. Over here, it's a lot hardcore because you know who's really wants it when you have a fucking blizzard and they're digging out their car to come to the gym. That, that doesn't happen over there. We have rain. What's our rain over in California like, Maria? Drizzle. It's drizzle. It, it's a joke. And people freak out. Storm watch. And, and people will skip the gym if it's a, a winter storm weather advisory, which is drizzle. Little drizzle, dude. They'll skip the gym. Where over here, if it's, we're having a blizzard, people shovel in the cars. Like, I, it's like I had to go do legs. Yeah. So that, that's, that's like we are kind of arrogant about this. I agree. But we're, it's rightfully so. We're like, fuck it. Go on the gym. Sorry from swimming. But we're going to the gym. <laughs> you know, that's it. Like, if the gym's closed, it's like, why the fuck are you closing? You know, we've only got eight inches so far. Yeah, it's you know what I mean? eight inches. It's, you know what I mean? We, I still got back to do, motherfucker. Yeah, I, I, we came yeah. in at Christmas morning. Like, I could only be open, you know, Tim's like, I could only be open to 10. And we all had to dig out. It took me like an hour to drive it because the road conditions, like, you couldn't even see 10. But I got dealt in. Yeah, see? You know? You, I mean, you granted, I probably need a real life. Like, you know, like kids, people running around, but I can't be a human being until I get my train on, you know? I, no, I feel you. I'm going to say, I wake up in the morning, it's the first thing I do is get something in me, and then I go to the gym. So I'm at the gym like 6, 6.30, the very latest. And, and that's just how I start my day. But East Coast and the West Coast, two completely different vibes. I'll forever say it, and don't mean to hurt any, any of my friends that are guys' feelings, so just don't get caught up in your feels, but... California is a bunch of fuckboys and a bunch of pussy boys. Well, we're a bunch of assholes. We are complete assholes. We are. Like, assholes, man. Yeah, I mean, Boston, New York, Philly, we all suck. Like, we mm -hmm. are a bunch of, like, we are complete assholes. But I actually think that kind of drives the whole bodybuilding thing. Do you know what I mean? Because there's, yeah. there's like, a, like a real macho edge here. Like, Whose dick is bigger. Yeah, yeah always. I, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. You know? Like, yeah, you see a guy with, like, skinny jeans on, it's like, fuck you. You know what I mean? Out there, it's a different story. It's normal. People, people oh, God, I don't want to, fuck it. There's one dude at my gym that purposely doesn't train legs because he wants to make sure he fits in his skinny jeans. That's a douchebag. Sorry, sorry, buddy, but you're a douchebag. You know what I mean? It's can, like, can you imagine, can, can you imagine if somebody said to you and say, hey, I'm going to skip doing cast today because, you know, it might be a little too tight for my skinny jeans. What would you think? I laugh the shit out of them. Like I can't even get into regular jeans in my calves, right? It's a completely different atmosphere. My wife's looking at me and she's like, David, I know who you're talking about, shut up. But now we're seeing a little bit in the younger guys. You know, like, like you know, texting, all like here's the thing guys. The deadlift think the be all end all. You know, just cause you can sumo pull four hundred pounds. I'm not impressed, dude. I did that fifth freshman year in high school at fourteen. You're twenty, you know. Take out the hair gel and stop pressing. And, and like hypertrophy, get some reps. Yes. Singles ain't gonna do nothing for you. Yes, I absolutely agree with that. And here's a, another giant factor. When I lived here in Boston, we never talked about steroids. Ste steroids, was that was not something that we just normally discussed in the gym. I've been physique company in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. I worked out there for like eight years. I know who was juicing and who wasn't, but we never talked about it. It was just something, unless it, the conversation came up between two friends. California, LA Fitness, first week I'm there, I have a 16-year-old kid coming up to me and saying, hey, what kind of cycle are you running? What are you talking about? I never touched this shit then, right? So I'm like, what are you talking about? So then I asked him, how old are you? And he's like 16. Doesn't want to know about diet, doesn't want to know about nutrition, doesn't want to know about cardio or other workouts. It's what are you running? 
at 16 years old. Do you, does that happen now? It's not, it's not happen now. Like you talk to the young kids, they don't even want to go to the gym unless they got they got that gear, which is so fucked up. Train, eat, first maximize. You know, maximize yourself. Build that foundation. But it's this whole new generation, but they want it now. I mean, you and I are both internet douchebags. I'm gonna throw that right out yeah. there. You know, that's what we do on internet. But like, there's this whole IG empire of like these like little dudes who uh, just come on quick and they want it like right then. You know, aesthetics means you just don't want to fucking train hard. You just I want agree. you just want chest and biceps. Yeah. Do some abs. That's you want to run a lot of training pro open. What do you think of uh, Natty Bodybuilding on Instagram? It, what I mean by that is I see so many coaches that claim Natty, which pisses me off, and they're like 19, 20 year old kids that already have, that are built like an ectomorph, have a fast metabolism, and they'll swear up and down that they're Natty, clearly they're already on drugs. Yeah, dude, it's absolutely. Selling programs. Yeah, dude, it's absolutely bullshit. Insta coaches. Yes. Like, these kids haven't been around long enough. God, I had my ISSA since 1998. They probably weren't even born by then. Yeah, they weren't even born back then. And that was back when you actually had to go, I had to go to UMass Boston every Saturday for four hours, eight to 12, for class. It was like, you know, yeah. so many weeks, and then there was a test at the end. Now you can just go online and you're insta train. Yeah. Dude, not everyone should get a trophy. The, but not everyone should pass. Society. Yeah, you're right. Like, oh, you came in last place out of 15 people, congratulations, you still came in. I had, I had a girl actually text me the morning of a show, the next morning. Her coach, young kid, of course she went with him, she's a young kid and he's, you know, dreamy, right? She was blown up like a tick and cramping. He had to do something with die as I and didn't know what the fuck to do with it. Didn't know how to, how to deal with it. So I had to, like, walk her through it. And he left her. He just gave her a thighs, you know, had her on thighs. I, because he, he didn't know anything about it. So wow. It, to explain to them what thighs is. Thighs is a diuretic, and the thing about thighs is that it forces out okay, potassium as opposed to sodium. So that's was one of the things that it's potassium depleting. That's why she got the cramps. That's why she got the cramps because you know she need you know she need Gatorade and all that. But he told her to overload on sodium. Eat a bunch of salt that night, which you should never do coming off the show anyway. So she was like a bloated tech full of edema because she was holding water on the outside, but she was cramping, cramping on the inside. Oh. This, this is what you get, what you pay for. Now, in your opinion, because I have a different take, I'm just kind of curious on yours. Do you think people online coaching, should those coaches have had some kind of contest experience? Yeah, I don't necessarily think you would like, I like to see people have done some contests and live the life more so. I don't necessarily think you have to be a champion. Because some of the people with the best genetics aren't great coaches because it just worked for them. It's like a guy like, um, who am I gonna throw out there? It's like Michael Jordan. I don't think Michael Jordan would be a great coach. Because everything just came so easily to him. Yeah. I mean, he worked for it, but he just had that level of talent. Some guys with great genetics, all they have to do is curl. You know what I mean? We, we can use, in a bodybuilding sense, use this as like Phil Heath. Exactly, Phil Heath. Phil Heath, as he said, it's gifted. I'm not saying Phil doesn't train hard. Yeah. But Phil's going to get... Genetically, he's gifted. He's going to get results from a lot more things than we would. Yes. You know, so you don't necessarily have to go with the winner. But I'd like to see somebody with some contest experience. Someone with a little bit more age than 21 years old. Okay, it's, then you're where I'm at because this I've done a video about this before, like online coaching versus personal coaching. I think online has its um, benefits on certain things, but I would personally like to see an online coach actually have done and suffered, like feel that suffering in order to give that wisdom down instead of just somebody that's naturally normally athletic looking and just be like, oh, you know, follow this and follow this and give a cookie cutter program. But there's so many 17, 16, 18 year old kids that have these followings on Instagram are willing to give these other dudes that money. Yeah, dude, it cracks me up like, a, you know, I know a young kid, girl, won a show and then she started selling diet programs. You're 20 years old, kid. You were dieted by somebody else. I mean, granted, I have a coach, but I'm a coach, but it's a different thing. Doesn't, That's more for accountability for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean um, 
you're ready to go out right diets with people. It takes a long time. You know, just because something worked for you doesn't mean it's going to work for everyone else. You should have like an understanding of like different types of diets, um, different types of systems in the body, like insulin response, all kinds of shit. You know, the other thing is all these kids are running slim. Be careful with that shit. You can die. What is that? Explain that to them. Insulin and training. Um, different types of insulin, Humalog pre-training, no log all day. Um, if your carbs aren't right, you can go into insulin shock and die. You can lay down and take a nap and not wake up. Seriously, you can die. That and DMP, you can cook to death. You really can. Because your metabolism is so sped up. Well, what it does is it actually raises the body temperature. Yeah. And So it's like T3 on steroids? Yeah, T3 on steroids. But what happens is people will... The dangerous thing about DMP is this, it's half-life. It's got a very long half-life. So say I'm just going to say, I'm just going to throw out a number. Say you're doing letter A. Well, the next day, half of that letter A is hanging around. So when you do letter A, it's going to be A plus half A. Okay. I don't want to throw any numbers because kids might... Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then the next day, there's still a little bit of that first A plus the half A plus the new A. So it's constantly overlapping. Not each other. Yeah. So like if you go to one, the next day you got one and a half... Then the third day you got one and a quarter, so it keeps sneaking up. It's like if you take a, a, a shot of testosterone, let's say testosterone, yeah, that overlaps each other. So yeah. if you're taking two shots a week or whatever it is, every four days or whatever, it's like every seven. So four days would be here, and then you take another shot, and then now you still got three days extra in you, yeah. and so on and so on. So when you're actually off, you still have it in your body for X amount of weeks, right? Right? Yeah, because. Uh, Sustanol has a really long acting test in it. Test, uh, no, no, no. Deck 1A, that's like the long two week one. But it's a 14 day ester. Damn. Yeah, that's a long one. Yeah. So, I told you, guys, we don't ever script anything. I never script anything when I interview people. I love interviewing people because it's just me sitting down and getting to know them. So, I don't know where the direction of the interview is going to go. And I, that's what I enjoy. No, I mean, most. so. Because you're off the cuff. But I want to say thank you to Bayshore Athletics for having me here. It's, it really is a good gym. It really is. And so thank you for taking the time out of your day and squeezing me in here. Even though I'm on vacation, my, one of my main things was I wanted to meet you. Well, first off, I'm honored that you made time to know, you know your daughter's wedding ring that you came here. Uh, no for problem, me. man. You know? Yeah, no problem. I, I've been... Uh, you know, I've been watching you on social media. We work together at IMAG Labs, but we never got to really meet and talk because, you know, you're really good friends with Ron. And Ron, I guess, Ron's always cool. I'm going to show a picture of us with Ron Harris. And Joe, I guess, don't like him or whatever. But they Joe, Joe's, thing. I mean, it's, it's, thing. Doing this, it's not my circus, it's not my market. That's what, what I'm saying. Comment, That's what I'm saying. That's why I like... Uh, the, the way we all are because we're all just grown men and we do what we, we do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Ron's actually a cool dude. Yeah, uh, I mean, he's like, my boy. You yeah, know? He, he's a humble dude. Very quiet and low-key. Bigger in person than I thought, too. Yeah, he's a big dude. Like, he's thick. I mean, do you want to talk about someone who's like, God, I'm so close so many times. You really? I mean? Yeah, I mean, you want to be top three in national show so many times before, you know, does he ever get jaded? I should have see. This is shit. I should have been asking him. I didn't even think, but but you know him. Did he get jaded? By I don't think he got jaded. I just think like he, you know, was waiting for a time. But then life happens. You know what I mean? Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? And you just take whatever life comes at you and you just roll with it. Yeah, and all I'm gonna say is this is an expensive hobby. It's a fucking selfish hobby. You know, I mean, it's a great lifestyle, but when you're competing, there's a certain amount of selfish, and it's expensive. For a $5 trophy. Yeah, but I mean, it's more than that, you know. Yeah, that. It's, and, um, yeah. You know, you, you got kids going to college, you got another kid, you got, you know, that's what you, grown men have grown men things to do. That's what makes you a grown-ass man. You have priorities. Responsibilities, yeah. You know, okay, you know, I've got X amount of dollars. Well, I got to pay for college, I got to do this, I got to do that. Sometimes, you know, can you waste this much money on stuff? I mean, because I don't know. But I mean, real quality, good products, you know, for certain things, ain't cheap, man. No, no. And we all know what it takes to be a pro. I mean, I'm not shitting on anybody, but we know. And any, I don't care, any pro body <coughs> that says they're completely natural, they're lying to you. They're, they're lying to you. you. 
the, na- the nanny dude. There's fucking Simeon Panda. A- anybody believes he's fucking nanny. I don't even... I've met the dude one time. Is he the Korean kid? Uh, no, African American with the long braids. Okay, yeah. He's not natural. And there's some, some giant Korean kid out there who they say is natural. No. And Koreans have great genetics. Yeah. I'm not trying to generalize, but like some of the best. Look at all the Korean bodybuilders. No, yeah. Insane genetics. Yeah. African Americans too. Like, I mean, if you if you want to break down genetic wise, when you look at uh, somebody African American descent, great shoulders, great back, their abs and their obliques always come in. If anything they lack would be calves. That that would be the first thing. There's not a lot of African Americans with like just like great calves that you can think of like right off the rip. They really have to work for that body part. Yeah. You know, but same thing could be said with uh, white guys. White guys have great legs, and they have to work on their upper body. That's true. You know, it's just it's just genetics the way it falls in, and your ethnicity. So, what can we expect from you in the future? It's the big unknown. I'm just going to keep producing my content and getting it out there. Okay. Again, I'm going to put make sure all the information's on the bottom 